we are looking at uh, chapter number 11 which is human eye and colorful world question and answer on human eye and colorful world the first question is the human eye can focus objects at different distances by adjusting the focal length of the eye lens and this is due to accommodation this is due to accommodation so we'll choose this option the human eye forms the image of an object at its retina retina is the place where human eye forms the image of an object the answer is retina d the least distance of distinct vision see for a young adult with normal vision is about so we are being asked about the least distance this is 25 centimeter so we'll choose c the change in focal length of an eye lens is caused by the action of who does it which part of our body muscles basically so these are ciliary muscles and what it does the relaxation and contraction of the ciliary muscles the change they change the curvature of the eyelids and the change in curvature of eyelids it changes the focal length of the eyes that is why the change in focal length of an eye is the consequence of or the action of ciliary muscles a person needs a lens of power minus 5.5 d diopters for correcting his distance vision for correcting his near vision, he needs a lens of power plus 1.5 diopter. So, what is the focal length of the lens required for correcting this one means distance vision and the near vision? So, we have a simple uh, relation for that. The power is related inversely to the focal length, which is to be very precise, P is equal to 1 by F. And this has to be in meters. In the first case, the power is minus 5.5. So we'll do 1 by minus 5.5, which will give you minus 0 0.181. In the second one, we have plus 1.5 d, which is so we have to use f equal to 1 by p, 1 by 1 1.5, which is going to give you 0 0.667. So the focal length for distance vision is minus 0 0.181, and for near vision it will be. 0 0.667 meter this has to be in meter the far point of a myopic person is 80 centimeter in front of the eye now what myopic person has the problem is that he is not able to see distance object clearly the hypermetropia person he will not be able to see the things which are closer to the eyes so, what is the nature and power of the lens required to correct the problem? As I said, the person who is suffering from eye defect is called myopia or myopic. In this kind of defect, the image is formed in front of retina. So, the concave lens is used to correct the defect of vision. In this case, the light is coming, if this is the eye, light is coming from infinity. So, we will take u as infinity. V is given as minus 80 centimeter we have to find out the focal length will we have taken minus with the convention we'll put this in the lens formula and we'll, we will 1 by infinity is 0 right let me make infinity 1 by infinity is 0 so f will be minus 80 centimeter you can divide it by 100 so you get it in meter minus 0 0.8 meter and we know that power is equal to 1 by f focal length we will take f here so this will be minus 1.25 diopter so we will use a concave lens of this much power which is required to correct the problem of the person make a diagram to show how metropia is corrected the near point of hypermetropic eye is 1 meter and what is the power of the lens required to correct this defect? Assume that near point of normal eye is 25 centimeter. As we indicated earlier also, the person who is suffering from hypermetropia, he can see distinct object or distant object 
distant object clearly but when it comes to objects which are nearby it he faces difficulty in seeing nearby objects clearly why because here the eye is or you can say eye lens focuses the incoming divergent ray beyond the retina if this is the retina here is the image being formed in case of myopia or hypermetropia the image is not formed on the on the retina right so the defect of vision is corrected by using convex lens the convex lens of suitable power it will converge the light to the uh, in such a way that the image should be formed on the retina we'll discuss it with the figure now this the this is the convex lens we are using this is the eye lens and now the imaging image is formed here so the convex lens actually creates a virtual image of nearby object this n dash at the near point of vision n of the person which is suffering from hypermetropia and the given person uh, will be able to clearly see the object which is kept at 25 cm we know this is called as the near point of the normal eye and if the Im image of the object is formed at his near point which is given as 1 meter so we'll use these values u as minus 25 cm v as minus 1 meter we'll change it to uh, centimeter so let us make it as a centimeter because this is also in centimeter multiplied by 100 so you get this one minus 100 centimeter now we have lens formula let us put this value in this lens formula and try to solve it f will be 0 0.33 and as we have got f we can arrive at power power is 1 by f which is 1 by 0 0.33 meter which is 3.0 diopter which is in the plus sign so convex lens of power plus 3.0 diopter this is required to correct this defect. What happens to the image distance in the eye when we increase the distance of an object from the eye? The size of the eye is limited. It cannot decrease or increase. And the image distance remains constant. So when we increase the distance of an object from the eye, the image distance in the eye does not change. How to compensate that? The increase of the object distance as being asked in the question, the increase in the object distance is compensated by change in the focal length of the eye lens. So the focal length of the eye changes in such a way that image is always formed at the retina, at the retina of the eye. Why do stars twinkle and why planets do not twinkle? First, we'll answer this. Why do stars twinkle? Stars are very far away and they emit their own light. And because of the atmosphere between us and the, and the star, we know that we have troposphere, stratosphere, uh, then mesosphere. So all along after that also we have, uh, you know, no atmosphere and the stars are there. So when the, the, the light comes, the, the different layers of earth, they, they offer refraction to this light. Stars are very far away from us and they are considered as a point source of light. So when this light is coming from stars, they enter earth atmosphere and because of this atmospheric layers and different density, different, different scenarios, it gets refracted at different levels, as I said, different layers, troposphere, stratosphere, mesosphere, exosphere, because of the variation in the air density. Air is different, temperature is different, pressure is different, different level of the atmosphere. So when the star light refracted by the atmosphere comes or more towards us, it will be seen as it is brightening. It appears brighter than when it comes, come less towards us. So it appears that if the stars are twinkling at night. Explain why the planets do not twinkle. Now the case is different here. Planets do not twinkle. They are in larger size as compared to the twinkle because uh, they are relatively closer to earth as compared to the stars. So planets can be considered as a collection of large number of point source of light and the different parts of this planet, this is a planet, different part of this planet produce either say 
brighter light or dimmer light and all all in all they nullify each other or if you take the average some as minus some as plus the net effect is considered to be zero therefore the twinkling effects of plants are nullified and they do not twinkle why does the sun appear reddish early in the morning see if this is earth you are here and sun is here so you are getting light but it has to travel a longer distance when the sun is here it's a shorter distance so when it is a longer distance that means it has to come all the way from here and most of the wavelengths which are I'll, I'll just explain you they will be washed away they will be scattered away here you are going to getting everything but at this point you will get this the reddish or the red component of the sunlight which is actually having vibrior color violet till red so during sunrise the light rays coming from the sun they have to travel a greater distance in the earth atmosphere before it reaches our eyes in this course or in this journey the shorter wavelength of light they are scattered out because of the rayleigh and my and other scattering the shorter wavelength there is a formula for that and we know that they are scattered out only longer wavelength reach our eye and we know that the blue color has the shortest wavelength in our sunlight and the red color has longer wavelength so the red color is able to reach because it has a longer wavelength it has it has higher frequency uh, that is why it reaches our eyes even after the atmospheric scattering of light has washed away or taken away the blue component or the other components right so sun appears reddish early in the morning and the evening also the same scenario somewhat like that it happens why does the sky appear dark instant instead of blue in to an astronaut when you are on earth the light are light is coming and it will be refracted it will be bended it will be bending and there are different wavelength different different levels are here so you get a proper you know you see cloud you see the sky which is blue because the blue is reaching to us the refraction is happening but still we are able to see and the just above us we see a blue layer of covering on us but when you go outside the atmosphere there is no atmosphere there is no bending there is no refraction astronauts are here that is why they see the sky as black jet black so the sky appears dark instead of blue to an astronaut why because there is no atmosphere in the outer space that can scatter the sunlight and as the sunlight is not scattered no scattered light reach our eyes or, or reach eye of the astronaut and sky is black for them these were question and answer on eyes and various other aspect related to it thank you so much and take care of yourself